The next speaker is uh, Albin uh, Verle. He's an uh, artist and uh, game designer from Nyx Art Collective. It's a Swedish art collective working with uh, different kinds of uh, interactive uh, art. And today he will tell about how to collectively create interaction. Please give a hand to Albin. Okay, hello. Uh, yeah, as you said, my name is Albin Verle, and I'm a member of the Art Collective Nix, um, which some of you may know, some other members of. Um, we are six people. We are a sound designer, a light designer, a game designer, a dramaturg, a, a writer, it's a writer. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I don't know what it's called. Uh, and uh, a director and me, who's a visual artist and also a game designer. And now I'm going to show you some images and a video. And uh, those are related to a piece that we're doing right now in Uppsala in Sweden at the theater institution called Uppsala Stadsteater. And uh, the piece is called Nattens Gudinna, or The Goddess of the Night, uh, which is a interactive kind of game-like performance for school kids in the ages 12 to 15, which is a great uh, age group because it's very different from each other, like when you're 12 and when you're 15, you have different priorities. <laughs> um, <laughs> which uh, which, which uh, shows in the piece. Um, but I'm gonna start using this clicker. Um, and this is the video trailer. It's two minutes, I think. Yeah, I have to push on the computer, on the play button. No, just on the, yeah. So that's the shortest two minutes uh, of today. <laughs> I don't know why I thought that. Maybe it's just because videos are generally two minutes in my life. Um, okay. So this, uh, this, as you saw, it's uh, a lot of kids going around in this uh, weird room with uh, different objects interacting with them. And this is one of these objects, uh, a close-up of a big drawer. And this is, um, yeah, I'm going to show some of these images that, that are from the set. It's really hard to portray in, in photos because basically it's like a, it's a black box, but it's uh, remade into a temple a kind of temple dedicated to the goddess of the night, which is no particular goddess of the night, just a, that's just a proposal, um, and to the hands. So the hands as modes of interaction or uh, tools of interaction, just like uh, in the way we can grab things and we can signal to each other and we can point at things. So that was like one of the uh, starting points was that we wanted to do something that had with the hands, uh, uh, that was circulated around the hands. Um, and it's, um, this temple consists of these different pavilions, uh, one of which, you, or actually three of which you can see here, or shrines or furniture. So. In the, in the front here, we can see a carpet with different symbols and some masks, uh, which were used to organize uh, the kids into groups. And then we see a, a kind of 
small stage and a table with a shining, shining, uh, well, uh, yeah, board. Um, and they did different kind of games. So each shrine or pavilion contained a game or a set of rules. And there were three actors um, that were the game masters. Um, and sometimes they just uh, made the uh, games themselves without a game master. And sometimes there was a, a talking object, um, which we will come to. Um, yeah, here is one of the talking objects. It's a doll <laughs> with a, a loudspeaker and a, a radio receiver, radio signal receiver um, in the chest. And the speaker was in the face. And there was, you could open it, and it was really creepy. Um, yeah, and here's another image of one of the shrines. So working with this was pretty special, because it's a very traditional theater institution. And we didn't uh, make a very traditional piece of theater. Um, so. This is a picture of Nyx, in a sense. Um, it's the Hydra. And what I like about this picture is that it's uh, several heads, obviously, uh, with one torso and it's one body acting with several perspectives in mind and several brains working but moving as one body. So here's another picture of Nyx um, from our website and I have no idea who made this picture. I remember when we took the, uh, the photo but this is also what's pretty good with working with Nyx is that a lot of what we do is anonymous even within the group. Uh, so when we write our pieces we do it with Google Docs uh, anonymous co-writing and when we post things to the website, it's also just anonymous. So that gives a lot of uh, freedom. But, uh, but how are we going to do this, uh, this interactive piece on the theater uh, scene? Um, we're going to the next picture. This is uh, photographs that I found on Google. This is a a flock of birds, a score of birds, maybe. No, a flock of birds. Um, maybe you've seen this outside in the nature or on YouTube. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, so this is a, like a, a group of individuals uh, working together as one body, uh, similar to the Hydra. And this is a score of fish. Uh, yeah, a score of fish. Yeah, score. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, here is a group of people at the Tahrir Square um, doing a revolution. And yeah, so basically the, the question, there are two questions at play. The one very practical question of how do we make this uh, this uh, interactive art piece at the conventional theater. And the other is a broader question, how do we collaborate? And how do we work in non-hierarchical non groups? And how do we make it work? And how do we make it uh, stable and safe? So, you could say that this, the work uh, with uh, the Goddess of the Night, it started with um, Nyx and our work. So we made a kind of framework. And then we invited the institution to join us, to, to build the shrines, uh, but also to come up with uh, creative content. And we also invited kids to playtest with us and give proposals. So during this entire process, 
we try to remove ourselves as the authors and make a, a kind of creative foam or a sponge which kind of is a non-hierarchical structure which lets things grow and dissolve. But we have these three methods, I would say. Um, the first method is to create distinct, uh, different and several distinct structures of communication. So this is a sign language. And that's a mode of communication that some people know. But it's uh, pretty different uh, from spoken language. And we have, for example, as I mentioned, the, the Google Doc co-writing. That's a language or a, a mode of communication that we use. And what I think is interesting is that different media of communication has different uh, conceptual and aesthetic uh, potential. So there are some things that you can only say in some languages. And there are some things that you can only create if you create it collaboratively. So we make in Nix, we make different small games that are not played for pleasure, but they are played to generate uh, creative content. I'm going to, uh, later tonight, I'm going to showcase some of these games. And what we also do is that we, in this case, we created a mythology. Um, and the mythology just started with a very basic need. We needed to have six groups of uh, uh, participants. So I am... Uh, kind of responsible for the visual and the tactile, uh, like all you see and touch. So I just made a drawing of six animals. And then from that, we created this kind of mythology, a kind of, a kind of magic system uh, in, the, in the kind of style of the Freemasons. So what we did is that we made this mythological framework that contained all these uh, images. And from these images, you can improvise stories. And we, as, uh, as the creative group, we can improvise stories together. But it's also easier for other people who are not part of the core Nix group to, to feel like they can come up with content. It's like fan fiction. So, Basically, we made fan fiction about a piece that did not exist. So we start with the... Yeah. In, yeah. And then the third thing is that we, uh, we use uh, iterative playtesting. So we make a proposal of a game or a, or a choreography or something, and then we invite uh, people to come in. Usually it's the... Uh, it's the target group, the target audience, the target participants. Uh, they come in and we test things and we ask them questions. What, do they, what do they, did they like? What did they uh, think was weird or strange? And then we made more of that. Um, and then we just go over and over again. So, and that was a challenge for the, for the house, the institution, to get like several hundred of people in to see the work before it was finished, before they could get paid for it. Um, but it worked very well. And this is a blurry image from the, from the construction site where they built all the pavilions. And uh, we, or I, I, I worked quite closely with the the furniture makers and the painters. And I, I basically came with them with loose ideas on how to do things. And I asked them because of their, like they had worked there for 28 years. So they had a lot of experience. And then I just asked them, what do you think 
from this framework, from this mythological framework, and from this function, we have to be able to move inside and we have to be able to open and close. Like, what do you think we should do? And then they had some proposals and then I made some designs and, and it really, I think it was really important to work interactively, not only with the participants, but also the workers of the institution. Like to include everybody that's connected to the piece. Um, and I think it was, it really kind of opened up the, uh, the process also in, in house, so to speak. They were really talking about it and thinking about how they could make new things like this. So that was, that was great. Yeah, here's an image. I'm going to speed up now because I am uh, half a minute past my deadline. Uh, yeah, this is just an image from a co-writing workshop that I hosted, which is kind of gives you the look of how it's, uh, yeah, a sense of how it looks to create things with Nix uh, in the first uh, in the first part of creating a piece. This is some details from the Goddess of Night, some objects that are used in the in the games, and uh, this is the website and my email address. <laughs> Thank you.